Are you feeling confused or overwhelmed trying to figure out how much you actually need to purchase a house? Then you're in luck, because I've made this video specifically for you. Hi everyone, it's Connor McDougall with McDougall Real Estate, and today I'm going to be explaining the different costs you'll need to pay at or before closing when you're purchasing a home with a conventional loan. It's important to realize that these numbers I'm presenting are estimates based off my experience and also information I've gotten from lenders, title companies, that kind of thing. So they're going to be give you a good rough estimate, but your closing costs on your own home may vary slightly from the numbers you're seeing here. For this example, I'm going to be using a $500,000 home as the purchase price of the home and assuming that there's going to be a 5% down payment, which comes out to $25,000. Now the first thing you're going to have to pay is most likely going to be earnest money. This is a check usually worth about 1%. Uh, it can be higher or lower and that's negotiable as part of the contract. Um, but it's typically delivered to the closing agent within two days of mutual acceptance uh, and it'll eventually be credited towards um, your closing costs if you end up purchasing that home. The next thing you're going to have to pay for after earnest money is a home inspection. Now, this price will depend on the company you choose and the services because there are a few different kind of options as far as what you want to get inspected. Uh, a typical home inspection varies in the range from $400 to $600, and then there's often an optional sewer inspection where they'll actually take a camera, feed it down the sewer line, and look at your, your backflow valve. Um, that's an additional $200. Uh, this is organized and paid for by the buyer, um, so it's not going to show up on your closing costs, your settlements, uh, but it will be, it'll be paid for out of the buyer's pocket um, during the process. For the down payment, um, typically people want to put down 20% or more if they can afford to because that will get rid of your um, private mortgage insurance. If you're not able to do that, um, for this example I've put 5% as the down payment amount and then the minimum you need for a traditional conventional loan is 3%. Um, this number can vary but obviously down payment is going to be one of the biggest costs that you see as, as part of your closing costs on that settlement statement. So this is one that's sometimes charged and sometimes isn't. Again, it's going to depend on the, um, the lender that you use and what their practices and, and fees structure is. Um, if you are getting a mortgage origination fee, it usually falls somewhere in the range of 0.5 to 1% of the loan amount. Uh, so for this case, that would be 0.5 to 1% of that 475,000, which is the, the amount of the total loan. Mortgage application fee, so this is another one that sometimes you'll be charged and sometimes you won't. Again, it's going to depend on the lender and what their practices are. This is usually a non-refundable deposit somewhere in the range of like zero to five hundred dollars. Um, it's essentially going to cover the bank and the lender's time in case you don't end up going through and actually getting a loan through them. Um, just so if they've kind of done some work on that, on that for you and worked with you and spent time, um, something to cover that so they're not left with nothing if you, if you end up going somewhere else or not purchasing a home at all. Another cost you're going to see as part of the closing costs is the appraisal. Um, so sometimes this is going to be included, included um, with your closing costs and settled um, on the day of closing as part of that, that whole disbursement of funds. Other times some banks actually require you to pay for it out of pocket ahead of time and then they'll, they'll credit it back to you at the end. Um, but what's important to realize is the bank actually does select the appraiser and they schedule that and deal with that side of things, um, but the buyer does have to pay that cost themselves out of pocket at some point. Um, usually $500 to $1,000 um, is what the appraisals are running recently. Um, I've kind of been seeing them in the seven to 900 range, it seems to be the new norm. So another one that's going to come up is the closing and title fees. Um, so this is usually around $1,200, kind of like a base fee, and then you pay about like 0.11 or 0.1% um, of the loan as, as an added fee on top of that. So uh, for this situation, um, with that $500,000 purchase price and a $25,000 down payment, that leaves you with the, the $475,000 loan. So in this case, it would be $1,200, and then 0.11% of that $475 gives you $525, which gives you a total of just over $1,700 in fees. Um, these fees go towards the, the lender's title insurance policy. Um, it goes towards closing fees and then also recording fees with the county. So that's kind of what that covers and, and usually about what it works out to. Another one that I wanted to cover, even though a lot of people don't include it in closing costs or they don't really, um, they don't really like to talk about it because it is an extra cost you're going to see, is prepaid charges that are going to show up on your settlement statement or your closing statement. 
So one of those prepaids that they're gonna pull and that they're gonna draw from in order to, to pay for when the, when the charges come up is your property taxes. Um, these, they'll take two months worth of what your, your property taxes would be if you're charged on a monthly basis, uh, which comes out to about $670 for, for this situation or this house. Uh, that is if the assessed value is as high as the purchase price and the appraised value, which usually it isn't, but I just wanted to be conservative with my numbers and, and so it's about 670. Now you have the option to do it differently, but another one that usually they're, they're gonna take um, as a prepaid is your home insurance. So they'll do the uh, 12 month premium. So they're gonna take a year's worth of your home insurance as a prepaid charge, and then also take an additional three months worth as kind of their buffer. So a year for, for a house like this would cost around $600. Um, so you're looking at another, another three months worth would cost you about $150 in that case. So total you're looking at $750 in, in uh, more prepaid charges for the home insurance. Another one I touched on briefly is private, mort private mortgage insurance or PMI is what they call it. This is something that you have to pay if you have less than 20% equity in your house or less than a 20% down payment in other terms. This is basically an extra insurance for the bank that if you were to walk away from the house, um, that, that the bank has been collecting some extra money that they can afford to sell the house and not be on the hook for any money. Um, usually they charge about 0.78% of the loan amount um, as your, your kind of total private mortgage insurance, that's what they charge for the year. Um, so three months worth, you're looking at a little over $900. So. That about covers it for the closing costs that a buyer is going to expect to pay when they purchase a house. Um, like I said, these are rough values. This is from my past experience and also just pulling some, some kind of rough numbers from colleagues and, and lenders and the title companies. So um, if you have specific questions about closing costs, it's always best to go direct to the source and talk to those people directly. Um, but I wanted to put out a video that gave people a rough idea of, of kind of how much it's gonna cost them and what, what that's gonna look like and how much cash or, or savings you actually have to bring to close. I'm also gonna include in the description below um, a link to download a spreadsheet um, so that you can actually go and input your own information or kind of the, the house you're planning to buy, what you're planning to have for down payment. Um, and if you follow the instructions, it'll be able to um, give you a, a rough estimate of what you're gonna pay for closing costs. So I hope everyone found this useful. Um, a lot of people throw around that one to 3% number for, for estimated closing costs, but I wanted to break it down a little more so people understood what they're paying for and, and where those costs are going and, and kind of how they break down specifically. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I hope to see everyone again next time.